Perfect with no flaws at all How the laws of a love A way of life, a way of life A way of life, a way of life Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh All praise belongs to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I welcome you dear viewers to this episode where we are going to be discussing funerals and death Joining us in discussing this topic we have our dear shiuch Sheikh Asim al-Hakim from Saudi Arabia Sheikh Mamdur Muhammad from the USA Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif from Canada and Sheikh Salim al-Amri from the UAE May Allah reward you all for joining us now, in our last episode, we were talking about some of the signs that are given to a person. We know that there are a number of signs given to a person in their life when they're on the right path. We know after death, there are signs. However, at the moment of death, you see as well that Allah gives signs to a believer. And this can be a form of glad tiding for the person. And it can be as well something that inspires others. So we mentioned, for example, some of the good endings praying whilst you die, reading Qur'an, and then you have the opposite, bad signs, when a person dies in disobedience. And of course, we know that you're going to be raised to Allah in this state. So this is a reminder for each of us to make sure. And we don't just make sure because we don't know when we're going to die, but we make sure by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout our lives. Now I'm going to start with you, Sheikh Salim about a few more of these signs of a good ending that the believer aspires to. Alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulullah ala alihi sahbihi wa ala. Among the good signs or a form of death which grants you martyrdom, as Sheikh Asim mentioned, that a woman in her labor, a woman dying in her labor is a shahida. And those who are fathers already, they know what a woman goes through at that particular moment. She sees death before her eyes. That's why you can't reward your mother. You can't reward her. She went through many things. This brings to mind the famous story of the man who carried his mother on his back from Yemen to Mecca. And he started making tawaf. And when he asked a companion or one of the ulama there, Tabi'in, Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar, he said, boasting, feeling that we are breaking even now. He thought that they were breaking even. That I carried her on my back from Yemen till here. What do you think? He said, can she walk? He said, yes. He said, let her walk. All this, not even equal to one of the contractions of labor. One. So no wonder if Allah makes the paradise at her feet. Because she went through many, many things. You can't reward your mother. So a woman dying in the labor, Prophet ﷺ said, she is shahida. She is shahida. Also he said, ﷺ, wal mat'oonu shaheed. Person dying because of plague. Ba'oon. So the plague, if a person dies because of that, then he is a martyr. And the Prophet ﷺ, he told us, that when you hear about the break of the plague in a town, if you are inside, don't leave. If you are outside, don't enter. I remember one of the ulama said, I asked an expert on plague disease. If this disease breaks in your country, what will you do? He said, I will isolate the whole country, all exits, airspace, sea, and land. I will not let anyone inside to leave or anyone outside to enter. He said, I can understand those outside not to enter because it is contagious disease. Why, why you will not allow them to leave? He said, the moment this disease breaks, all the people got affected. Some bodies, they have high immunity resists, but they become carrier. So if they leave, they will spread it somewhere else. Who taught Muhammad Sallallahu this? That the whole country becomes a quarantine. And that's why also some of the fuqaha, when they mentioned why shouldn't, they said also because it is martyrdom. Why are you fleeing from dying as 
amata wal mat'unu shaheed wa wakhz al jin shahada this is another form that the jin they kill a person if a person was killed by the jin he is also shaheed this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and we know this hadith in sahih muslim of the sahabi that the jin killed him and also another thing he said wal mabtunu shaheed a person dies because of a disease inside the abdomen abdominal diseases and some of the ulama they included all these different fatal diseases so alhamdulillah allah's bounties are innumerable did now you've mentioned a few examples here some of them sudden and some of them that are hardships that a person might suffer through now the sudden death we can't prepare for it this is a reality that it's going to come and you're not really going to have a say however when it comes to sicknesses uh, old age things like this we can start to prepare so getting closer to the actual death what are some of the things that we can do whether we're with those who are dying or whether we ourselves are the person who is dying before we step into this i'd like to make connection between what the sheikh said these cases of being plagued or having a calamity or tsunami or as the sheikh mentioned also i'd like to connect it and this would be a very good answer for those who always raise this question why me why this country why this village and not another village and most of the people see it from a negative perspective although what we have heard now it's from a positive perspective because every muslim in the bottom of his heart or her heart aspires to die as a shaheed and now it came to them without their request so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preferred those people to let them die with this type of death because they will go to a higher level of paradise so all the time that's why we don't hear we have to ask the scholars what is the situation all the time and instead of trying to interpret what we have in our minds or to analyze what is in the media we have immediately to go to see the muslim scholars what they say about this situation in fact we should be happy for them because they got this quality of death inshallah even for the ones who don't die it's a reminder I just wanted to comment it's a little bit funny take us a little bit off the topic maybe put some spices on it sure Sheikh Salim was mentioning one of the good signs of dying that you are mat'oon and I remember once going to one of the Islamic centers in the US not physically but on the web trying to see some of the materials and one of the imams of that center was translating the good signs of death and he translated it to be a stabbed and i don't know if the guy is from new york maybe it's from the ghettos or some projects and this is the way they think that the prophet was referring to and this is extremely important that a person who translates is fluent in both languages especially when it comes to quran Yes, but let me comment on this. In translation, it can work both ways. And this tells us the importance of the understanding of the companions of this context. True. So it's not just a problem of a language here. It tells you that you need to go to a scholar or to study this whole context in order to come up with a good translation. Yeah. So mat'oon means implagued, a person with the plague, which is an epidemic. But mat'oon as in stabbed it comes from the word pan and you have to be careful when you are referring to that as for your question you posted earlier what is our duties what should we do if we are on dying bed which we, we tackled that before and we said that you have to think positively of Allah Azza wa Jal and feel your sins as well but those around a person who's dying we also said that they should remind him of la ilaha illallah and when he dies and if he dies there are a set of things that they should do among the first is that they should not supplicate anything that is negative because allah azawajal would assign his angels to say ameen so if my loved one dies and i say oh may allah make me instead of him the angel would say ameen so you have to have positive dua so you say oh may allah forgive him May Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy upon him. So this is yeah, one of the things that come to mind. Which also shows the, the positive spirit of Islam all the time. 
when you trace Islam in all events, you talk, Islam all the time adopts the positive thing to do. So now we're at the point where assuming a person has died, this person is now going to return to Allah. Now we have the duties of the family, the community, and all of the other people. So from the time that a person actually dies, many of the duties are going to come. Now we're going to go to a very short break, inshallah, and then we're going to try and list some of these things and, you know, the duties and who will be posted to do what. So inshallah, we will discuss this in a very short moment. So dear viewers, do stay tuned. Inshallah, we'll be back with you after a very short moment. Islam solves all of the problems all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to your viewers. We're here with our dear Shiuch discussing the topic of death and funerals. Now, just before the break, we were mentioning that we're now at the point where a person has passed away. We have his family, his friends, the community at large who are there. So from the point of death, as soon as the person dies, and I'll ask you, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, what are the duties that now become important for those around to do? Sure. One of the, obviously, the main duty right here is going to be to wash the body and bury the body. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that one should hasten in burying the body. So, for example, if there's somebody well-known and famous and whatnot, and they, there's a big deal made out of their funeral, and they delay the funeral, and many people are coming, that shouldn't be the attitude of the Muslim. attitude of the Muslim be that this person dies, that they arrange for the washing of the body and the janazah and get that done, in a hasty pace. And in addition to that though, not hasty so much that nobody comes to the janazah prayer, right? You want a large crowd to come to the janazah prayer. When my grandmother, rahimahullah, when she passed away, it was an awkward, it was a weekend day and so on and so forth. But following the hadith of the Prophet I said, I wished for a large gathering of people to come so they could pray for her. And so I sent the message out. I told people, you know, my grandmother died, please make time today come to the jazza, alhamdulillah the masjid was full. So it was done in the same day? Done, I mean it was done hastily but also you wait until you've got that crowd of people so that there's enough people to pray for the janazah. And having people praying at the janazah, sometimes this can be a good sign? Not only a good sign, it is if only 40 sincere Muslims, they do not associate any partner with Allah, muwahid, monotheist, believers attend the janazah Allah grants them the right to be intercessors for you and accepts their intercession and their dua now a person is dying when the person is dying it's the angel of death will come it's only one angel but he has helpers and his name by the way is not Israel his name is Malakul Maut the angel of death now the soul reacts in different ways. The righteous soul comes out easily. Comes out easily. Like a drop of water flowing smoothly out. Whereas the evil soul or rebellious soul disperses in the body. And the angel traces it and takes it out. And it is so painful. Like the Prophet ﷺ said, like a hook in wet wool, it will not come out easily, it will tear everything. So is that different than the sickness? Because sometimes you see a good believer but they've been through heavy sickness. And then, but when the soul is extracted, are you saying the soul goes out easily or how does it work? The soul comes out, flows easily and smoothly. This is a good ending. Brother Muhammad is referring to is how do we combine between this hadith of the soul coming out easily and three weeks of agony and pain because of sickness? So this is the death itself, the departing of the soul, which is at the very end. It's a different matter than... Towards the end. Towards the end. Because the opposite also applies. If a disbeliever dies quietly and we see that he's him dying peacefully, this is not a good death because he's peacefully passing away but the minute the soul is being taken out of his body it is hell nobody sees it we see the body we don't see the soul we don't see it so now the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that when and the soul by the way it's something material something physical that's why there is a conversation between the angel of death and the soul that is something created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is something 
physical, something tangible, something material. And the angel, if it is a good soul, will be wrapped and they bring this shroud from the Jannah. And a very nice smell comes out. The moment the soul comes out, and Allah knows it seems it comes out maybe through the mouth. The sight, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the sight follows, its soul goes up. Up. To where? To Allah. Where it came from. It doesn't go to the right, it doesn't go to the left because Allah is up. Allah is above the creation. So the sight follows the soul. And then we have to close the eyes. So this is a sunnah. To this actually. is sunnah, yes. You close the eyes, it is sunnah. And it's interesting to note that we know from the narration you've mentioned that the soul is taken out. And you will see this many times. And I've spoken to brothers who work as paramedics in the ambulance. And they would say this, you know that the person is about to die the moment they look up. SubhanAllah. As if it's following the soul that's being taken out of their body, SubhanAllah. From their eyes, from seeing, watching their eyes. Indeed. Yeah. The Sheikh mentioned something very important, that the number of the people who would make the Salat al-Janazah for the deceased person, as we know that there are some narrations, one of them is 100, the other one is 40. But the most important thing here is that they are, they have no shirk in their hearts. And I'd like to focus on this, that the person who would have no shirk in his heart would do definitely favor to himself, and inshallah he or she will go to paradise because they die as muhid. And at the same time, he can save others. Try to imagine that. By being muhid and being, by being away from shirk, is that you can help many other people right, because you can save them by being one of these 40 or one of these 100 when you make shirk is associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's a very important issue in Islam and I think any Muslim with some reason in his mind he would spend some time asking himself or developing this am I having some shirk hidden shirk or not? it's worthy of spending some time and asking scholars all the time because it's the final thing you want to get paradise and this is if you die, even if you do other sins, but not shirk, you can repent from them. Yeah, but shirk, you have to repent from it, and you have to correct what you have in your belief. So it's very important, and it works both ways. When we actually have the janazah, now, the janazah shouldn't be delayed. We don't do, for example, we wait a week. But then at the same time, we also want to make sure that others are aware of this, as Sheikh Muhammad mentioned, that we have to let others know, so, inshallah, we can have these muwahideen at the funeral. So generally, I mean, is there a time limit that's suggested? Uh, should we write letters to people? You know, how do, how do we go about this process? Well, when a person dies, the Sunnah tells us what to do. So Hadith, Um Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, when Abu Salama died, the Prophet came in, they were wailing, and the Prophet told them, do not supplicate upon yourself because the angel will say, I mean. And the first thing the Prophet did, alayhi salam, was to close his eyes as Sheikh Salim indicated, and this is part of the Sunnah. Also part of the Sunnah is to cover the body, because the Prophet ﷺ, when he died, they covered his body. And covering the body for all people who die, so that people would not be affected by the appearance of the deceased. Now, in different schools of thought, there are lots of things to be done, but they're not backed by the Sunnah. They may be backed by practice, they may be backed by uh, goodwill and intention for example if the jaw drops of a deceased some schools of thought say that you have to close the mouth so that you don't have any insects going in and if it is not possible because there are no muscles then some of them even go to the extent of tying the jaw up by a ribbon or not of course a ribbon that are used for children but this is something intended for the sake of not getting the mouth open and even people when they look at their loved ones in this status they wouldn't feel so good about it some schools of thought even say that you have to loosen the limbs so that they're not stiff so the minute a person dies you just loosen his elbows his knees so that it would be flexible when you come to wash them some schools of thought say that you put something a little bit heavy on the stomach so that when a person dies due to the warmth of the weather, he may swell. 
his stomach. And so they keep something on his stomach to prevent this. Some put a brick, some put something heavier, some less in, in weight. But scholars say if you keep them in an air-conditioned room, this would not be necessary. All of this is not from the Sunnah. But it is something that the scholars came up with as part of protection of the body. So sometimes maybe you can enlighten us about you have these things where they drain the blood, where they sew the lips and sew the eyes and stuff like that. No, this is what mutilation. Is this is mutilation that is not permitted in Islam. And this is something non-Muslims may not be aware of. In Islam, we have great honor of the deceased corpse. The Prophet tells us Islam, that the breaking of the bone of a deceased is like the breaking of the bone of a living person. So when a person dies, we give so much value to that person that we wash him, we take care of him, we calm his hair, we perfume him, but we don't perform autopsy, for example, and cut him open and do all of this. This is, unless it's legitimate, unless it's something that is for a criminal investigation, yes, this might be called for. But other than that, it should be respected and taken care of. Some people exaggerate this. Instead of just cleaning and perfuming the body, they put the makeup, and even we've seen this in some communities, I've seen it in Indonesia, and they dress him up in a suit and with a tie and... Muslims? Uh, oh, yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah, and this is unfortunately because they are living with non-Muslims in the South. And that's why a Muslim all the time needs to know, needs to ask the scholars, and I wish that we would have many websites, even for the non-educated, these websites would be very beneficial in case of somebody dies, they would access immediately. But they have to all the time train to themselves that we are followers of Muhammad Sallallahu We are not followers of X and Y. So all the time we need to keep on the Sunnah in order to do it right. Jazakallah khair. We have come to the end of the episode. It's been very good discussing the topic with you. May Allah reward you all. We hope inshallah to see you in our coming episodes. And may Allah reward you also, our dear viewers. Uh, we hope, inshallah, that you've gained some benefit from this, and we hope to see you in our coming episodes. Until then, I greet you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A way of life, a way.